Hey there everyone, my name is Luke and welcome to my channel. Tonight I hope that you'll join me as I go for a real back to basics approach. With the equipment just behind me here, I'm going to use my DSLR and star tracking mount. It's going to be no super long exposures or anything like that. No auto guiding, indeed it's going to be as simple as is possible. I'm aiming to shoot one minute exposures with this star guider and the target I'm going for you could have guessed it, I'm sure. It's going to be the entire Orion region. Well, luckily, Orion now looks to be in a shootable position, so I can get started at any moment. All I need to do is polar a line. But before I do that, I'm going to take you through really quickly the equipment that I'm going to be using tonight. So I think we'll start with the basics, and that's with the mount itself. It's an AZ GTI by Skywatcher. Now, it is intended, as you'd imagine with the name, as an alt as mount. That is to say, it moves in altitude and azimuth, like this. However, with the use of a wedge from Skywatcher also, usually intended, I think, for the Star Adventurer systems and some custom firmware that Skywatcher released, you can indeed turn it into a fully fledged go-to mount. Now, the next major piece of equipment we want to talk about is the camera itself. I'm using currently here a Canon 700D and it's been Bada Astro modified. Now the main difference between an unmodded and a modified DSLR is the fact that an unmodified camera is going to block quite a lot of hydrogen alpha light which is one of the main things we want to capture and a modified camera is going to let through basically all of it. Inside the body of the camera I'm actually using a clip in UHC filter by SV Bonnet. This is something I just bought off Amazon to basically make nebulae targets like this leap out that little bit more, especially emission nebulae. Really the final thing left to talk about now is the lens itself. It's a Canon 50mm f1.8 and it's a fantastic little lens. I really do rate it highly, especially for daytime photography. You get that lovely depth of field. Not that we're interested in that for Astro. Now I wouldn't recommend Astro use with it wide open at f1.8 as the amount of distortion in the corners is pretty severe in all honesty. So tonight I'm going to be using it stopped down to f3.2 and in order to keep the dew off the lens I've also got a small homemade resistor band dew heater that I just soldered together. Well, happy to say that everything's up and running now. It's all polar aligned properly using the SynScan Pro app. All I had to do was a two star alignment. You've got the choice of one, two or three. Then you tell it finally to do a polar alignment and it moves back to another chosen star, offsets it a little bit and it's your job basically then to inform the app when you've centered it back up using the adjustment bolt on the wedge. And I think it worked really fast and really, to be honest, quite well. Now I did get a chance to take a look at one of those 60 second exposures, like I mentioned, uh, one of the things I did notice, aside from the fact that there's no star trailing, is that it's very, very washed out, and I think that's attributable, really, to this extremely strong moon tonight. It's about 96% illuminated, and couple that with my regular sky conditions anyway of Bottle 7, and it's a bit of a recipe for disaster, but all the same, I'm going to do my absolute best, just take lots and lots of exposures. I think I'll come out, perform a meridian flip manually, uh, just by telling it to go to Alni Lam, I think is the star that I'm centred on, that's the middle in Orion's belt. It should know when it's time to perform a flip then and uh, move to the right side of the meridian and continue on shooting. I'm just going to take as many shots as I can before the uh, weather stops me. And at that point, as long as it's not raining, I'll take some darks, flats and bias so I can fully calibrate this image and process it to its best. Anyway, I'll catch up with you all in a while. I really must go inside and warm up now as it's pretty much freezing out here. Well, a few hours have passed now and unfortunately it looks like it's the end of the session. We're starting to just get the first of some forecast of clouds beginning to appear, but that's not actually the reason I've had to stop shooting. The reason I've had to stop is because the bottom of the Orion constellation that I'm shooting is starting to get cut off by uh, the fence right next to me. So I think it's time now I take some flats, bias and darks and just start to wrap things up a little bit. So just to wrap things up now, I need to take some flats bias and darks. So to take the flats I'm going to leave obviously the lens cap off. I'll put this A4 tracing panel on the end of the lens. 
and I'll turn the camera to aperture priority mode. That should automatically give the correct exposure for a decent histogram distribution on the back of the camera. And I'll take maybe about 30 frames with that setting. At that point, once I'm finished with the panel, I'll take it off. I'll put the lens cap on the lens so it's blocked out from seeing as much light as is possible. And then I'll turn it onto manual exposure and increase the short speed to maybe one four thousandth of a second or should I say decrease it to make it basically as fast as it can go and only record the bias signal. Once I'm finished taking a few of those frames, maybe again about 30, I'm then going to take roughly the same amount of darks, maybe 20 to 30, 60 second darks, all with the same settings as before. So it's ISO 800 is going to be the kind of overarching setting I'm going to use throughout these and uh, I'll just run off a few darks at the same temperature roughly as these lights have been taken. Well in terms of actual capture that's just about everything taken care of now. I just need to let the camera finish taking some darks and then I've got all the files I'm going to need. That's lights, flats, bias and darks and that should make for a decently calibrated image I would hope. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and I hope that I'm able to present to you a decent image at the end worthy of your time and on that note I'd also like to thank you very much indeed for watching and giving your time and your support as always I really really do appreciate it and I hope that you all know that so uh, I think that's about everything I've got for you now I'm going to head off inside and warm up so until next time clear skies